there is something uh, kind of magical about the quiet, the altitude, for one thing. We're, we're about 7,500 feet where we're sitting right now. And therefore, the, the biology of the place, the plant life, and the animal life, and, and what it looks like, that just just sort of filters out all the nonsense and get, you can get down to some pretty good musical business. The harmony of Santa Fe, New Mexico, has inspired many of Dave Grusin's compositions. He's one of the foremost composers of music for films. When I decided to move down here about three years ago, I had been here working with uh, Redford on, uh, on the Milagro Beanfield War, which was shot up the pike here about 60 miles, and uh, suddenly thought, well, this is just culturally a real interesting place to be. And then I, I finally uh, came up with a theme that, that is vaguely rooted in those areas. Maybe I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll show you what... Uh... It's supposed to be played on a guitar, but, but I don't play the guitar. and soundtrack for director Robert Redford's The Milagro Beanfield War has been nominated for an Academy Award. Four others of his more than 30 movie scores have earned Oscar nominations. Heaven Can Wait. Tootsie, the song from that movie, It Might Be You, was a big hit. If you let it, we're a third of the sound of the film. The other two thirds being dialogue and sound effects. And uh, people that are making really uh, realistic films, they want absolute kind of documentary realism. They're going to be really uh, disappointed if they can't hear all the sound effects. Mm -hmm. Which means sometimes the music just takes a dive, you know. And, and it's, you say to them, but wait a minute, we can do a better emotional job for you than the sound effects can. And, and you'll lose that argument if, they, if their minds are made up in that other direction. So it's, um, you know, it, it's not a job for somebody with uh, uh, an inflexible ego. <laughs> In addition to wide acclaim for his film and television scores, Dave Grusin has won several Grammys and is a successful recording artist. His performances are usually sold out. The New York City Concert Hall is quite a distance away from the Rocky Mountains, where Dave's life and music began. I grew up in a little cow town in Colorado, so I came to it all pretty late. My early background was classical music. Uh, my father was a, a fine violinist and a lover of classical music, and we had that on a lot, and not a lot of jazz around. And you wanted to be a veterinarian, is that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, I did. I at one time I thought that's what I was going to do, or uh, raise cows or something. You know. But Dave Grusin has cultivated contemporary jazz instead. Not just as a composer and musician, but as a record company executive. Grusin is the G in GRP Records, his own independent jazz label. Good, how are you? The R is his partner, former drummer Larry Rosen. They founded the company together, having met in the 60s on the road with pop star Andy Williams. Later, they worked at the majors, the big record companies. In 1983, Grusin and Rosen went independent. We decided we we're going to start our own company based with the concept of the artistry of, of course, of the musicians and the technology of CD and digital recording. And that was really the root and the foundation for starting GRP. This is the chick area? Yeah. Chick wants to go with this shot here. GRP has proved to be a pioneering record label. With an all-digital recording philosophy, Grusin and Rosen have an aggressive marketing strategy that sends many of their releases to the top of the jazz charts. We're CD 101.9. Good afternoon, this is Russ Davis, and this set of music continues now with Dave Grusin. From the Cinemagic compact disc, this is Condor, from the motion picture Three Days of a Condor. <laughs> While many major record companies have responded cautiously to new recording technologies, GRP has plunged ahead, first with compact discs, and now with digital audio tapes, or DATs. A commitment to state-of-the-art technology is only part of the GRP philosophy. Dave Brewson and Larry Rosen are just as dedicated to supporting the careers of new and established jazz artists. GRP has always been the basis of finding new artists, and I think that's really the lifeblood of not only our company, but of the record industry itself. I mean, you've got to find these new people, and, and they're out there, and it's just a matter of going out and searching it out, and it's very exciting for us to do that. I see it as a chance to, to uh, hear and watch a lot of people that I admire. Um, all of them, I'm mad, younger than I am, you know, and... And I used to be the young kid, and I, I know what it's like to, to have a chance to do something and, and try to find your way and try to make a mark in this, in this business, in this field. their records, GRP often goes on the road with an all-star band. Guitarist Lee Rittenauer and saxophonist Tom Scott are two top-selling GRP artists. It is fun to play. It's really? fun to play well, and it's fun to play in a, in a situation where, where you yourself can hear what you're doing and hear what everybody else is doing, and you have somehow have the sense that the audience is hearing it in the same way. Then it's really... I understand the seduction of wanting to go out and perform, except for those moments, and, and they're fairly rare. Uh, it scares me to death. <laughs> you know, it's, not, it's not something that I have a big burning desire to do. Behind his calm and confident public demeanor is a man who seems happiest when he's far away from the concert hall and city lights. Dave Grusin's center stage right now is in Santa Fe, where he feels most inspired. It's an incredibly beautiful place. I'd have more of an excuse if I were a, if I were a graphic artist or a painter, because a lot of painters and photographers live here, and, and you can see why, because of the incredible light. Um, but I think it's a good place to be creative musically as well. <laughs> 